Well, Luvel, it's nice to catch up with you again. And look, a lot of conversations around uh, some sensitive topics, but also some topics that I think sh shine a light on all the uh, progressive approaches that we're taking uh, with our districts. Yeah. What is it like for you? Let's just talk about the community of superintendents. Mm -hmm. Take us behind the scenes and the regularity with which you engage your contemporaries in your own development as a superintendent yeah. and those that look up to you and the awards that you've received yeah. and the recognition. Yeah. Are we seeing more and more communication actively between superintendents that are sharing best practices, resources, uh, strategies? Because it's a very complex role. It's not yeah. something that you yeah. can, I mean, you, you, mm -hmm. you're working 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I mean, tell me about that communication between your colleagues. It's more than the, a network of superintendents, it's a network of friends. Um, the cohort, the network, the, the folks I hang with, talk with, laugh with, are all now current superintendents. Um, many of us grew up together. We were teachers, assistant principals, uh, principals, assistant superintendents in similar districts or nearby districts. And what's cool is now we're spread out all over the country. And with the technologies, we're one group text message away from sharing a best practice, sharing a good joke, um, picking one another up when something's not going well. So it's a very tight-knit group. And being at a conference like the National Conference on Education, seeing everyone together, it's like a cool party but also a professional development opportunity. Do you think, yeah, I was gonna say the opportunity, that word there, do you think there's opportunity to look at a network like what you're talking yeah. about? When you said we've grown up together, yes. but yeah. now we've spread across the country, mm -hmm. is it fair to say that there are probably lessons that we can learn for the next crop of leaders out there to say we can identify them, maybe better through the network that you've mm -hmm. developed with mm -hmm. your professional colleagues to say, you know in 10 years, this might be the group that we need to be able to support, yes. mentor, Mm -hmm. And AASA is on the right path with that, with the various academies and cohorts mm -hmm. that are now four aspiring superintendents, sitting superintendents. Um, that wasn't available 10 years ago when I was looking. Um, I had to search for folks and folks had to find me. Now there are support networks in place to bring folks together uh, quarterly, monthly, um, almost any day um, using technology. So yes, it's something we need, we need to capitalize on and it will be critically important going forward. Um, particularly as the uh, struggles are becoming more and more real and more the more of them and there are many people out there looking to take superintendents down and if we're not working together and sharing best practices and growing together um, it be can become very easy. Do you think that communities, uh, members of communities around the country have an accurate portrait of what today's superintendent oh, is no. like? Um, most folks think I uh, spend my time making snow day calls. <laughs> I wake up every day wondering if it's going to snow and if I'm going to close school and that's pretty much all I do. Um, so we have to do a better job of um, educating communities about what we do and I've been trying to do that using Twitter. Um, folks now have a sense of what I do because I'm quite frankly posting it. If I'm in a classroom doing a walkthrough, if I'm at a basketball game, if I'm working on policy, putting together a budget, folks are getting a sense that that's what we're doing and why. So yeah, we as superintendents need to do a better job. It's not just about making the snow day call. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, on the flip side of it, I've had conversations with technology providers mm -hmm. that service education globally. Mm -hmm. And there's often this sentiment that, oh, how do we ever approach a superintendent? <laughs> it's almost like this, it's a gated community of sorts. Yeah. To that same point of, of community members that are just thinking that you're sitting there making a snow day call. Yeah, yeah. So, how can we more systematically and purposefully yeah. mm -hmm. communicate what superintendents do, sort of the human behind the title, yeah. uh, in a way where it personalizes it, whether it, it inspires future superintendents and or just gives us a more accurate portrait of education in general. And, it, and that's difficult. Um, we get four or 500 emails a day. So anyone just sending an email hoping that we would respond may not get that response. Um, we do respond to relationship building um, at events like this professional development opportunities, conferences, workshops, um, those opportunities to build relationships with superintendents, um, to get close to them, to hear their thinking, um, and then make connections so that we can partner uh, to solve complex problems together. Yeah, no, it's true. They have to get, they have to get in front of you. Yeah. You have to it. break some bread and yeah. spend some time yeah. to get to know. Yeah. Um, what is inspiring you uh, when you talk to other superintendents? What are some things going on around the country that admittedly maybe isn't going on in your district just yet, yeah. but that you say, my goodness, we haven't thought about that. That's mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. And now the wheels are in motion uh, for you to think, okay, how could this, what might this look like in Ithaca? Yeah, a few things. Um, I'm really excited about what I'm seeing in some of the larger districts, particularly Baltimore County, around digital curriculum impl implementation. 
Um, many of our districts, um, we're one, have moved forward with one-to-one -one device deployments. Um, we have the tools in our young people's hands. We're allowing them to create and solve and, and, and put things on those tools. But some of the things that Baltimore County is building as part of their infrastructure or network internally and partnering with other folks, um, discovery education, some of the things they're putting on devices that are native, it's pretty impressive. Um, and it's a tool and a resource that no other generation of young people have ever had before. So I'm excited to see, um, visit, and learn more about how they're building these tools out before even putting them into young people's hands. As you scan your own district mm -hmm. and you see young people that are achieving great things, yeah. do you ever sit there and say, you could see the next superintendent when you're looking at you know, oh, successful yeah. high school students? Oh yeah. And what, what is it, what qualities do they have mm -hmm. that you say, you know, that's, an, that's a young person that could really make a difference? Yeah. And I see it every day in my own kids. Now, I don't necessarily, and I have a daughter and a son, seven and five. I don't necessarily want them to be a superintendent, but I want them to have the skills that a superintendent must have. I want them to be able to practice and want to practice independently. I want them to be able to collaborate effectively with a diverse group. And I want them to be able to perform um, when, to an, with, an, with an authentic audience in front of them. Um, those are skills that every young person is going to need. Um, and right now I see superintendents need to have those skills every day. Yeah. To put the work in independently, work with groups, and then produce and perform in front of a group. Um, I want my, young, my, my children at home and every young person in my school district to have those skills. Well, continued success with both. Yeah, thank you so much.